C236, Compensation and Benefits. Let's talk about it. Dear me, three to six months. Watch how I make you proud. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Xavier. This is Tech Xavier, where I share my journey in tech, both on the career side and on the education learning side. I'm a recent graduate from WGU, and I got my Bachelor's of Science degree in IT management. And with the help of my enrollment counselor, my program mentor, and really just a desire to be done with school, <laughs> I was able to accelerate. And I was able to complete my degree in about three and a half months. And I started on November 1st of 2022 and completed my degree on February 16th, 2023. In today's video, we're going to talk about compensation and benefits course C236. We'll talk about what that means, why is it relevant to IT, what are the course requirements, and ultimately, how do you pass? So let's go ahead and get started. So what is compensation and benefits aside from the reason why we work? <laughs> no, just kidding. We love what we do, right? <laughs> but no, seriously, compensation and benefits is really just looking at how people are paid and then what are the ways in which they're compensated for their time and what perks or benefits do they get along the way? So you learn about things like total reward strategy, how to evaluate a job, market positioning, different pay systems, employee benefits. So actually like healthcare and life insurance and things like that. And then also intangible rewards. So maybe you go home early, maybe you get some kind of recognition. There's just all kinds of things that come into compensation and benefits. And this is important to know because when you are working with your team or you're managing your team, understanding what things drive your team members in terms of compensation, in terms of rewards is really important. What are the extrinsic and intrinsic motivators for them? And then beyond that, how do you help your team develop? Do you help them look and strive for higher paying jobs? And then what are some things you can help inform them to make them aware of what is available to them in the way of compensation and benefits? Let's go ahead and hop on over to the student portal and I will show you what it looks like when you log in and access this course for the first time. OK, so here we are at the course homepage and we can tell we're there because we see C236 and here you'll see when the course started. There'll be an overview. Here's some competencies here that you'll cover. There's a course planning tool, learning materials. There's a cohort sign up. We have the assessment or the pre-assessment, rather the objective assessment and then the performance assessment. So this is a three unit course and it does involve an objective assessment and a performance assessment. I generally recommend starting with the performance assessment first and then moving to the objective assessment. But we'll talk about how to prepare for this class more in depth. And then lastly, we have course feedback, the instructor, which contains your instructor name, their office hours, contact information, that kind of thing. And then we also have the announcements, course tips, course search and course chatter. Let's take a look at the course resource page, because generally with these types of courses, when you have to do an objective assessment and a performance assessment, I like to start with the performance assessment and the best guide for that is the course resource guide. OK, so here we are at the course resource page, and essentially this is my go to for any materials and anything I need to know. There's all kind of amazing links. I won't open these in particular because I just can't, but we can look at the high level stuff just to see what is waiting for you when you get to this page. So you have the course instructor team, you have the WGU calculator policy, course tips and frequently asked questions. Now there's a quick start guide. There's various templates and various resources that are going to help you with the task. Then you also have the objective assessment resources. So conversation and benefits topics here. These are all video series and I'm going to be completely honest. These videos really helped me get a better grasp. I really didn't have to go into the course materials at all. I just reviewed these and then occasionally I would open up a couple of slides just to see the notes that were in there. Um, they also have a crossword puzzle, which is pretty cool. I didn't even notice this last time I was here, but these are resources for you to reference when you're doing the performance assessment and the objective assessment. Now, one thing that I want to inform you about when it comes to the task 
for or the performance assessment for this course is that you're going to be working a lot with the concepts around like evaluation of a job. So like the job value structure of a company. So where it is now and where they want to change it to. You're going to do some research and base it off a specific area in the U.S., and use some market research to determine what is the best maybe pay grade. And then you also have to think about, okay, if this is what we're changing things to, how does that affect current staff? Do they get a pay raise and what is their rates? And then you also have to do what's called a, you have to create a pay grade. And it's kind of like a chart to see where everybody falls. So there's a range of job titles that fit a specific pay range. And you have to use the text to determine what that looks like. So it's a really cool practice. I found it useful and I like these kind of courses. They're like HR courses because it helps you to understand what's going on on that side of the organization. So now that we have the performance assessment piece out the way, let's go ahead and hop on over to the objective assessment prep so you can see what things I usually do to prepare. Okay, so here we are back at the homepage. And generally the first thing I do to prepare for an objective assessment is schedule the assessment. <laughs> so as soon as I'm ready, to start the study process, I'll go ahead and schedule my objective assessment maximum of two weeks out from, from today. So definitely schedule it. You can always change it later, but it does give you some a nice push and some pressure, good pressure to follow a study plan. And that said, once you've done that, the first thing I recommend doing is looking at the course planning tool. You can launch this. It's a very small, maybe five or six question long quiz or test. And at the end of it, or during the test rather, as you're exposed to different topics, they're gonna, there's like a little questionnaire that asks you, are you unfamiliar with this topic? Are you somewhat familiar with it? Or are you extremely familiar with it? And you would be surprised how many things you actually know from your, possibly your current job, which may be in this case, like in HR, or maybe you've worked alongside HR technicians, or you have a coworker that shares some things with you and certain things click. So that's the course planning tool. And then once you're done with that, I recommend going straight to the pre-assessment, taking the pre-assessment one time. At this stage, you haven't done really too much reading or a review of the materials. So you're just taking it blind. This is a 45 question um, uh, exam and it's approximately two hours long. And then once you complete the pre-assessment, you'll get a pre-assessment report. And let's see if it shows it on my end here. All right. So this is the pre-assessment and you can see basically like what areas have the most weight. So like total reward strategy is 19%, uh, job evaluation is 17%, marketing position is 24%. So I generally keep this in mind so that when I'm studying, I spend the bulk of my time in the areas with the most weight. And so this is subject to change. WG, you can definitely change this, but for the most part, you can see that here and then you can make a determination about what areas you really need to focus in on. Additionally, there is this legend or, or breakdown. And so when you look at the different colors, if you have blue, you're exemplary. That means you've done or you satisfy more than what is considered competent. Competent means you've met standards. Approaching competence means you're almost there. You just need to do some maybe specific or targeted studying for the areas that you need more help in. And lastly, unsatisfactory means that you have significantly missed the mark and you need to go back and hit the books. Now, once you've completed the pre-assessment, the next thing I like to do is go to the course materials. And this is gonna give us a couple of other methods for preparing. This is the My Educator textbook layout. And if you've seen other videos of mine, you've probably seen this as well. Or if you're taking this course, then you're familiar with this textbook. Now, with textbooks and assessments, I like to be able to do the least amount of work as possible for me. And so therefore, once you determine like what areas you really need to focus in on, the areas that you either completely missed the mark or the areas that you are like approaching competence at, what I recommend is jumping to those sections. My methodology is I like to prime my brain and I do that by basically using the table of contents. So you'll go to the contents here and it'll open up like this. And what you're gonna do is at the very base level, you're gonna read all of the initial topic titles and just ask yourself questions about what this could mean, or maybe infer or make it take a guess at what's going to be the content within each topic. Once you've done that, go a second layer deep, and then you can see 
the subtopics. So like section 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. And this is going to give you even more information that you can ask questions about to yourself, or you can think about and make determinations regarding what kind of information is going to be in this section. And again, to shortcut this, if your only area of focus that you need to really get clear on is integrated reward structures and maybe job analysis, then I will just focus your efforts on those two areas. Now, step four in my process is getting more hands on test taking opportunities. And the way you do that is by clicking on course, and then you can click on assessments. And when you take the assessment or when you come to this page, you'll see all the various assessments here. So there's assessments broken down by topic, and then there are also end of topic reviews. So essentially these different like knowledge checks and topic reviews are what you would start with first. And then you would go through the topics that you need to focus on. And with these end of topic reviews, they're module quizzes at the end. And there are generally three different versions of them. As you can see, I didn't really take these during this time because I actually did decent on my pre-assessment and I tackled specific areas. But nonetheless, you, you have this for reference. And also, again, the videos are really good. So if you want to skip this altogether, go check out the videos. And then once you've done all that, now you can just take your pre-assessment one more time until you get a nice passing score like this. And once you complete your pre-assessment, perhaps on the same day, you can go ahead and take your objective assessment. If you notice, I did that here. I like to attack while the information is still fresh. And remember, the scores you get on your pre assessment or on your coaching report, it's different competencies, but some areas that you're really strong in can help undo the or gloss over like a poor score. So for example, if we look at this pre assessment report, and we go back into it, there are different areas that you need to focus in on. And so once this thing loads, as you can see, these are all exemplary here currently, but if we go down, these are areas I didn't do well in at all. And again, this is really a, a reflection of me skipping stuff, but let's just use this as an example. Let's say I got exemplary here, competent here, approaching competency here, like those scores would skew me and it would take me out of the red zone, potentially in the orange zone or even in the green zone, uh, depending on how well I did in the heavier weighted areas. So if I got exemplary in this area and it's 24% of the test, that's going to definitely have some carryover for my overall score. Same with the total reward strategy or the, or, or the job evaluation. These three are the heavy hitters. So if I focus a lot of my energy on these areas or the topics that are that cover these areas, then it'll help me prepare or help me ensure a higher likelihood of a passing score. Okay, so that wraps it up for today's video. I wanna say thank you as always for checking out the content. I really hope that this was helpful for you. Let me know in the comments whether or not you have completed this course. And even if you have any strategies for other students that are going through it, maybe there's a simpler way that even I didn't know about that can help people accelerate even further. And the last thing I wanna mention is every course has its own degree of difficulty for each of us. And so this is the course that's really bugging you or is really getting at you that you can't just seem to pass, then just try not to be too hard on yourself. Try to take a breath and really just work hard on yourself. Work hard on creating a better approach to studying this course. Reach out to your instructors, use your resources. If you're working in HR, reach out to a coworker who may be more familiar with this, but just do what you need to do in order to get through it. Don't beat yourself up. It is a complete waste of time. And all it does is shortchange you from the progress that you are going to achieve. With that said, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Dear me, three to six months. Watch how I make you proud.